And I want to very welcome to the fourth lecture itself. Um, tonight we have a slight change in the and um, we get a cancellation from Professor Stuart Fotheringham from Manuel is going to be joining us next semester. But I'm delighted to have a group of very, very enthusiastic and very committed students here uh, tonight. Uh, a mixture of third years and fourth years and fifth years. Um, there's a mixture of places being shown from China through to New York, through to New Zealand, through to Stockholm, and other various kind of like um, places that the students have been visiting. Um, I think it's, 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 it's a testament to the students that they went and studied and both sketched and looked and explored all of these spaces and it really does show the value of travel and experience um, when you do travel as an architecture student. So um, without further ado, I'd like to welcome the first of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven students that are here tonight. Sinead, Gavin, Alan, Idel, Una, David and Colin. So I think we're beginning with Sinead. Thanks so much. Um, 
bottom left hand corner is the Muslim district in Shian. Um, it sort of seems, uh, we visited five cities in total, and this definitely seems to be the most traditional experience. It's one of the oldest cities in China. Um, it was sort of an amazing, we arrived at night time, and this was the scene that we greeted us on the bottom left hand side. It was the Muslim district, like I said, it was full of stalls and amazing smells and kind of food, and it was so loud and people everywhere, it was impossible to kind of walk through, we were traveling through like, in one's bags as well. But it was sort of an incredible atmosphere in the Muslim district, and it was kind of a city that came alive at night time as well. It just wasn't the same during the day, it kind of looks to where exploration happened at night time, and it looked things like this. Um, on the right hand side then, or just the top is uh, some views of the city. The middle one is the Terracotta Warriors, the site where the Terracotta Warriors were discovered and excavated just outside Xi'an. Um, and then the bottom is the Bell Tower in Xi'an, um, which sort of uh, is an example of the traditional architecture in China, which um, sort of more than emphasized the height of the building, they tended to emphasize the breadth of the building, so with these horizontal lines and the roofs and kind of a large foundation base as well um, that the buildings were placed on. Then after Xi'an, we took a 12-hour bus journey to Beijing. Um, on the left hand side then is the Birds of the Olympic Stadium, uh, designed by Herzog and Murrow. Uh, it was, this is nighttime on the top and by day at the bottom. Uh, these are also some views of the Birds Nest as well. The, um, some of the interiors and some of the external kind of framework as well. that stands out from visiting there as well is that a lot of the interior seems to have had to be redone. There's a lot of the concrete that's been recast and it was a different colour completely and parts of it that were falling apart so I don't know what the story was in that but um, it wasn't quite an impressive moment after I think. Then this is Beijing again on the left hand side is the Forbidden City um, which is another example of the traditional architecture. The yellow roof tiles as you can see on the, the second picture there um, were used only in kind of the buildings of the emperor. Um, it was also the number nine was a significant number in Chinese architecture. So in the Forbidden City especially, um, a lot of multiples of nine are used throughout the design of the architecture. Um, the door on the left hand side, for example, has nine rows of nine, um, and a lot of things that have kind of multiples of nine and nine spaces between arches and nine. There's supposedly 9,999.9 where we can the city as well, so there's a significant number in terms of architecture. On the right hand side then is the CCTV building um, in Beijing also. Uh, it was sort of <coughs> seems to be under construction or some sort of renovation work. I was trying to find out why um, the best I could do was that there was a, an adjacent building caught fire uh, in I think 2008, I think, or maybe later than that. Um, so it seemed to think that there was renovation work still going on and that the building was still unoccupied. Um, when we got there we kind of found it difficult to find it. We were searching, we were looking around everywhere we thought it would be something quite easy to find in the skyline. Um, and when we, after ages, we kind of looked straight above and it was just moving over us, but there was a kind of a big uh, timber frame around it. It was under construction so we couldn't get in at all. So those are some of the best keys that I could manage to get of it. We had to go down the entire block to try to see it. So um, then next was also in Beijing, the Forbidden City, or the, sorry, the Temple of Heaven. Um, it was sort of used for the annual ceremonies of prayer to heaven, and it was intended for good harvest. So twice a year, the emperor would come here and um, would pray for a good harvest, and there would be sacrifices made at different points, and it was sort of a very sacred uh, place. He would make the from the Forbidden City, he would make a sort of procession to the or to the Temple of Heaven, and so the commoners weren't allowed to see this procession happening. And he worked; he was kind of the emperor was shut away for a couple of days, making sacrifices and making these prayers, and no one else could be in attendance at all. Um, so, in, comparison, in contrast to the yellow roof tiles of the Forbidden City, in the Temple of Heaven, there's blue roof tiles used, which symbolise the sky and heaven. Um, also, it's the building is. 36 meters in diameter, 38 meters tall, and it sits on a base of marble. Um, it's circular it, in Chinese kind of mythology. The square represented the earth, and the circle represented heaven, so that's why it's a circular form of the temple. Um, then we 
planned to go to the Great Wall the next day and it really kind of snowed, so it was difficult to make anything out of it. But even some images just from the Great Wall and have some of the kind of uh, buildings along the way as well. And just the bottom right hand corner was some of the perfect snowflakes. They actually fell like you would see a snowflake drawn in a amazing, perfect shaped snowflake, which was one thing I remember from the Great Wall. Um, next, we traveled back south again to the last city, which was Nanjing. Uh, we went specifically to see this building, which was the Massacre Museum. Um, it's a museum dedicated to the memory of those who were killed in the Japanese massacre um, in 1937. Um, it was built uh, near what they call the Pit of a Thousand, body, of a thousand Corpses, um, where their bodies were buried after the massacre. Uh, unfortunately, it was closed when we got there, and we were only there 